we need to prepare the butternut pumpkin for our one of our fillings or for our filled pasta for our raviolo. Before I go further as well, I need to explain the difference between ravioli and the raviolo is the size. So ravioli traditionally you would have as a main course and you'd have many small squares of filled, a filled pasta. However, a raviolo usually um, refers to one big piece um, or two that is filled. So it's just the size difference. Um, and raviolo we usually would have as a single entree as well. Okay, I just want to explain, and I, I haven't prepared any of my vegetables today because we need to learn how to prepare different vegetables specifically different ways. So pumpkin I find is most, probably the most dangerous vegetable, especially when you're dealing with um, jack-o'-lantern or Japanese pumpkins, and they're huge. Obviously in the pumpkin world, there are hundreds different types of varietals of pumpkin. One fallacy we need to, I suppose, get straight straight away. Um, some pumpkin skin is really, really nice to eat. Um, and is really good to roast with it. So for example, grey Japanese pumpkin, personally, I think you should leave the skin on. So bear that in mind as well. A lot of vegetables and fruit, all those vitamins and minerals actually are in the skin, so it's better off. Also, you've got to look at waste products. How can we turn our waste product into something else? Somebody was once upon a time smart enough to go look at the seeds and go, why don't I dry these pumpkin seeds out? And pumpkin seeds are amazing, obviously, as we are quite aware of. So, a normal pumpkin, usually, um, you'll see the root where it's come being picked off the stem. The bottom half will have the seeds, whereas the top half won't have the seeds. So when the bottom half comes out, you see there's a bit of a softer part around that area where the seeds are. Um, however, we probably only need half of this pumpkin today, so I'm only going to top, cut the top. Usually, I top and tail my pumpkin first. So when I refer to top and tail, it means I cut the top and the bottom off. So I've cut one side and I've cut one side. The reason why I do this is because I put it down on my bench and it doesn't move now. So now it's safe to work with. When I work in a kitchen as well, we always like to keep clean and tidy. We're doing many things at one time. So I always have a bowl next to me for my scrap. Okay, so now peeling. You'll find when you do a lot of pumpkin that your hands will actually turn orange and it feel, puts a film on your hands almost and it's really hard to get off, but it does eventually. All right, so as little as possible, we never want to peel anything off, uh, too much of a peel, like this. So the reason why we're roasting our pumpkin today is for flavor. We could have boiled it. However, boiling is going to take all my flavor and my vitamins out. We could have steamed it, but then I don't have that caramelization on the outside. We could have deep fried it, but I don't need it to be that unhealthy. So hence why we're roasting. Now, when we talk about methods of cookery, and it's a little bit of a fine line, what's the difference between baking and roasting? Roasting refers usually to fruits, vegetables, proteins, whereas baking usually refers to cakes, pastries, etc. Okay, so we've peeled our pumpkin. Now I just want to rough dice it. So that way first. Put it down quite simply. Dice your pumpkin. Even though my recipe doesn't stipulate it, I'm going to put a little bit of beautiful sage. So sage we um, refer to as a hard herb. A hard herbs are usually the herbs that we cook. So sage, rosemary, thyme, oregano. With a lot of herbs, we tend to not chop them, or they're better to be picked. When we chop them or put them to a knife, they bruise as well as um, all the flavor comes out. All right, so I'm just gonna roughly break my sage on top.
beautiful aroma. So the next ingredient, some extra virgin olive oil, a nice quantity, some sea salt, and some black pepper. Mix, place in a preheated oven at about 190, 200 degrees and roast until golden. It will take about 20-ish minutes. I tend to place it out and move it a little bit around because if it's all tied together, there's not going to be enough airflow around the actual vegetable itself whilst it's roasting. So no, never overcrowd your trays. All right, in the oven. Okay, so our pumpkin's cooled down. So we, I want to add some flavorings to it. Now, our recipe specifically says to use breadcrumbs. However, I've used a 50-50 breadcrumbs to almond meal. Traditionally, we would actually put um, amaretto biscuits in here. So hence why I'm putting almond meal. So I'm gonna put a couple. Now, the amount of dry really depends on um, the time of the year. So sometimes the year, your pumpkin's gonna have more water than less. At this time of the year, it has less um, due to being dry environment. So sometimes it will need more liquid to less liquid. I want a pinch of nutmeg. Be careful with the nutmeg, it's very strong in flavor. Also want the zest of half a lemon. We put a little bit of acidity there just to balance it out because we've got a lot of sweet flavors in there. So it makes it the sweet, sour, savory. of lemon juice, some parmesan, now I'm just going to mash it with a fork and bring it all together. Traditionally as well, um, this dish has mastardo de fruta, which is um, Italian mustard fruits. They're almost like candied fruits and mustard seeds. Absolutely delicious. However, I've not put that in today. Now, I don't need too much more, I think, any um, breadcrumbs. So I'll always just start with a little bit. Like I said, it, the um, recipe specifies 50 grams, but I use barely 5 to 10 grams. So be really careful with that. All right, so now we taste. Almost perfect. With a touch of sea salt, touch of pepper, and a touch more of nutmeg. And because I like cheese. All right. So we're going to put that back in the fridge, allow it to sit until our pasta is ready. All right. So whenever we're cooking pasta, you need to put a large amount of salt. They say to approximately half a litre of water, I think it's about 15, 20 grams. At the same time, I'm going to start making um, some beurre noisette. So beurre noisette, direct translation is in French is hazelnut butter. 
So it's basically when we burn or slightly start to brown a butter, it starts getting nutty flavors, hence the name Bernoisette. We're also going to infuse it with some um, sage for our garnishing. Whole leaves. Nice amount of butter in your frying pan. Turn it down now. Sage leaves. Let them start cooking. All right, while that's happening, I'm going to start cooking my pasta. We've already seasoned it. It's boiling in. Because it's fresh pasta, it takes only a few minutes. I'm using a spider. I've just made a few extra garnishes for this dish. I've actually made a gingerbread crumb. That will complement that pumpkin. Pumpkin and ginger work hand in hand, match made in heaven. Um, in fine dining restaurants, I made this dish and I did it with a, um, a foam instead of the butter. So I infused and made a butter and bernoisette foam instead. All right, let's check on our pasta. I would say another 30-ish seconds. It hasn't broken, which means we've made really good pasta. Even though it was a bit of an uphill battle. Now, in my bowl here, I'm just going to put a touch of olive oil. Touch of seasoning. All right, we can see that color of the butter is starting to go darker. Now, that's what we want. nearly done. At this point I'm going to season my butter. Some salt. All right. Drain my pasta. In the olive oil, toss just quickly. All right, start serving. Roasted pumpkin ravioli, burnt butter and uh, a burnt sage butter 
and hazelnut with a gingerbread crumb. Thank you.